Hype is building for a possibly cold and snowy winter, and developing data continues to show that it could be active. This video will give my perspective on trending factors to watch, including how this winter setup may have similarities to some of the coldest winters ever recorded. Let's get into the overview. One Nation Weather. In my last winter forecast, I covered the broad setup and trends to watch that could affect the winter. Let's recap that outlook before I present any new data. My last winter outlook went in depth on the expected La Nina pattern ahead. La Nina is a climate setup originating in the East Pacific Ocean that tends to cause notable repeating trends depending on its intensity. As I discussed, a weaker La Nina, or cold water anomaly in the East Pacific, often is connected to a few main effects. With temperatures, more variable but often cooler than normal temperatures are common in the northern U.S., while warmer conditions have been historically favored in the south. For precipitation, it is often drier in the southwest and wetter in the central and northern zones during a La Nina. This typically happens due to an active jet stream that dives down variably across a good chunk of the country. The last update also briefly touched on factors such as the polar vortex, which can be a big player in bringing colder air to parts of the eastern U.S. in a sometimes unpredictable manner. With that, model guidance and some other points in mind, my first winter forecast came to project a split temperature setup with the northern cold that is typical of a weak La Nina event, but stretching a bit further southeast overall. Then I concluded that even more of the central U.S. could be active this winter, basing that off of some newer guidance that has been consistent. With that being said, it's time to discuss more data and trends that may signal the possible cold and snow the USA could see this winter. First though, consider the question of the video and feel free to let me know in the comments while you watch or after. How much snow is an ideal event for you? Is your ideal snowfall zero to three inches or upwards of a foot blocking the doorway? I'd love to hear from you. Drop your opinion down below and feel free to let me know where you're watching from as well. Speaking of snow, the next few minutes are going to discuss an analog winter that would certainly make snow lovers hopeful for this year. That analog is the winter of 2013 to 14. I've seen many headlines claiming the setup for the upcoming winter has connections to and could mirror the winter of 13 to 14. That led me to do my own research and consider that year's setup and similarities to the inbound months. One similarity the 2013 to 2014 winter has to the incoming one is the development of an unusual pattern not frequently recorded. That is the large mass of above normal water temperatures in the East Pacific called the blob when seen in the past. In both 2013 to 14 and the following winter of 2014 to 2015, warm sea surface temperatures were noted across a large chunk of the northern Pacific Ocean as the blob formed. This blob did overlap with a more active jet stream that in both winters happened to bring cold air and big snow totals to more North American zones. For 2013 to 14 specifically, major winter storms marched across the U.S. from Thanksgiving and Christmas all the way through early spring. All said and done, Chicago saw double its normal snowfall with 82 inches. Indianapolis, Baltimore, Albany, and many other northern cities got several feet and were also far above the norm. Even down south, close to a foot of snow fell in places such as Oklahoma City and eastward to Charlotte, North Carolina. One reason for the comparison of the incoming winter to that one, it's the fact that a similar blob has been noted forming this year, particularly in September. There are a couple things to note before drawing conclusions, saying it means a booming winter though. While that blob did seem to correlate to the cold pattern in 13 to 14 and 14 to 15, the sample size of a couple years may not be large enough to support a confident prediction of any kind for this year. It's also worth noting that this fall's blob has actually weakened a bit into November and therefore may not play as big a role as it seemed to 12 years ago. Regardless of whatever comes out of all of that blob stuff, there definitely has been increasing data to support connections of water temps to large-scale weather patterns. It's interesting and a definite factor to bring up when comparing and contrasting setups for sure. One other similarity connecting 2013 to 2014, 2025 to 26, and other years is with a more well-known factor. That is a neutral to weak La Nina setup with cooler than average water temperatures in the East Pacific. I've taken a deeper dive into all of the compiled weak La Nina type events over several decades. This map shows that if anything, colder than normal air definitely has been favored with the broad scale climate pattern predicted for this year. It's honestly even more than I've indicated in previous discussions. Combine that with an also historically favored active precip setup during weak La Nina in many zones, and it could get interesting this year. 
the maps I just showed definitely bring in more data and reasonably should increase some level of hype for a possibly cold and snowy December, January, and February ahead. In addition to looking at those common historical trends and analogs, it is worthwhile to look at some under-the-radar setups when discussing winter outlooks. I was actually asked about the QBO in a comment on my last winter outlook, and thanks to that, I want to dive deeper into it in this one. Don't worry, I won't go too in-depth. The QBO, or quasi-biennial oscillation, is one of many shifting patterns around the globe that also can factor into the global weather patterns at sometimes random intervals. The QBO, simply put, involves the flow of air around a dozen miles above Earth, and the direction winds are moving at that height near the equator. If winds are moving west to east at 12 miles above the Earth, that tends to be associated with atmospheric currents holding together the polar vortex up north. That westerly wind phase tends to result in decreased Arctic air outbreaks across North America since the polar vortex would be strong and steady in the Arctic. However, this winter is set to have an east-to-west wind above the equator, which historically has led to a wobbly polar vortex and upper jet stream. Even the Climate Prediction Center experts indicate that cold air penetrating the northern hemisphere is a higher end possibility than usual due to the QBO this winter. Yep, another piece of pretty good news if you are a cold lover, and probably if you're a snow lover too. Despite all the favorable data for a cold, snowy winter, I want to briefly point out that what I just discussed isn't everything that could affect the winter season. Other oscillations, such as the Arctic Oscillation and North Atlantic Oscillation, wobble around with global upper-level energy and currents that are unpredictable from this range. These oscillations can also assist in providing varying effects at the surface in North America, even periods of extended warmer air. Ultimately, unpredictability is a thing and will result in inaccuracies when predicting weather from this far out. However, with all of the new and previous data I've looked at in my mind, it's time for me to unveil my final winter outlook for 2025-26, to 26, including my official snow zones graphic. For temperatures, I have increased confidence in cooler air with all of the new data I've looked at. As a result, my updated outlook includes an even bigger chunk of the northern U.S. engulfed in below to well below normal temperatures expected. Historical data and new model forecasts continue to show much or all of the south, and particularly southwestern U.S. warmer. That's why I'm still leaning near to above average in the temperature forecast for those zones at this point. Remember, that doesn't mean some big cold blasts can't come down at times even there. I just think it will be warmer overall. With precipitation, I haven't made too many updates since my last outlook. The active and variable jet stream of La Nina and its connections should bring a solid corridor of above average precipitation. I have the highest confidence in that for zones such as the Mississippi and Ohio Valley regions, where the occasional severe storm event couldn't be ruled out during warmer spells either. The closer you get to the Gulf Coast and Southwest U.S., I'm projecting higher chances of below average precipitation. That's based on historical La Nina data and continued projections from new models and official sources. Now it's time for the snowfall setup graphic I've made for the upcoming winter. Given the increased probabilities of an active and variable jet stream, I'm projecting near average or slightly better than average snow totals in all the white shaded zones. Despite the projected shots of simply cold dry air with the most likely winter setup, times of milder air could get forced out by significant winter storms. Those could easily help in bringing up the heavy snowfall totals and adding those totals up to average in many of the white shaded areas at the minimum. Even in zones anticipating near to below average precip overall down south, I think there is a higher chance of a quick big snow in some of those zones versus the norm, given that there should be some big cold shots coming down at times. For the reddish pink zones, I think you have the highest chance of a boom this winter. There could be lots of dry, fluffy snow events in the northwest U.S. mountains, and then possibly across much of the north towards the Great Lakes. That would be particularly if this winter ends up mirroring that of 2013-14 to 14 or other related analogs. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if some spots in the Midwest and Great Lakes get more than a foot above the normal snow totals. All of the outlooks I just showed are based off of the analogs I talked about earlier in this video, the fact we're going to have a weak La Nina, an East QBO, and some other stuff that I've looked at. With that being said, that's all I have for my final overall winter outlook slash snowfall forecast. 
Keep in mind that I drew inspiration for my research from some specific articles and videos, particularly their headlines. I'll link that content below if you're interested in also checking out those articles and videos as well as their awesome information. Other than that, one other key reminder is for you to check out Weatherbell Maps. The link to Weatherbell Maps in the description will give you access to a free trial for models like I use in my videos. You could see snow total models at your own fingertips by checking out Weatherbell and their subscriptions for yourself. Anyways, that's all I've got for you. Subscribe below and turn on those notifications to stay tuned this winter. Thanks for making it through this one. God bless you and have a great day. One nation weather.